Hey guys, what up, what up, what up? This is Jemmy with the 37th episode of the Curve the Cube podcast. Curve the Cube is an art, entertainment, and media podcast based in South Florida, aimed at inspiring the whole entire world to pursue your dreams outside the cubicle. Don't get stuck in a rut, dude. Uh, you should follow Curve the Cube on, let's see, Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and it's super easy, it's just Curve the Cube. It's our handle on everything. Uh, yeah, so go look it up and follow, follow, follow. And uh, this episode, I'm really excited. Um, it's with uh, Carlos Alman, and he is a local artist, and that's how I first got clued into him. He had posted something on Twitter about his exhibit, which is coming up on August 28th, and that's when I first found out about him, but what's interesting is once I started to, to, to dig around on this guy, I was like, oh, there, there's a lot to this dude. He's super interesting. He um, has, he, uh, he's a Cuban-American, um, he's a novelist, he's an artist, but uh, his art exhibit um, coming up here on the 28th, it's going to be on the 28th at the Sunrise Civic Center. Starting at 6.30, I really hope everybody goes out there and sees his art because it's incredible. He has a concept behind it that I think is, fa is fantastic. It's called Dark Chocolate Japan. And the, his whole concept of dark chocolate, you know, I ended up reading on the podcast exactly word for word how he describes it on his website because it's just, I love how he describes it. But essentially, um, that like when you boil all of humanity down to just the essence of what makes us all beautiful it's what also makes us all the same and um, you know when you when you take just the the raw dark chocolate of something and before you add in all the other stuff the raw dark chocolate itself is just what's rich and beautiful and that's what her, his art is about and I loved that concept I thought it was really beautiful and wonderful so um, you know he has imagery that you just don't see anywhere else like you know dark-skinned geisha girl you're, you're, you're talking about American geisha it's a it, this one painting in particular that just really caught my eye because it's something I've never seen before um, but he does yeah he does a lot of uh, Japan inspired art and um, and everything he makes kokeshi dolls, which we talk about on on this podcast. And he describes how someone who's independent can very easily, a lot more easily than I even realized, uh, self-publish if they choose to. Uh, which he did for he published a book for his art collection for this particular exhibit. So go look up Dark Chocolate. Um, and he also talks about just being a novelist and his. He, his novels have received some really great critical acclaims, particularly in the Latin Latina community, and uh, he just wrote some amazing stuff. So go look him up on Amazon, but just go to carlosalman.com. It's C R C A R L O S A L E M A N, like Carlos Aleman. <laughs> go look him up. Um, dot com. Go look him up and just link him up there with his uh, with all of his books. Um, check out information on his exhibit and find out all of his social media on there. Um, everything there that, that you can find on him is there. He even has some shirts up for sale on Zazzle that you can kind of design your own shirt. You pick whatever shirt design you want and then throw up whichever one of his pictures you want onto it. And, and there you go. You got your own custom Carlos Ademann shirt. And he's just really cool. He's a really good soul um, and really interesting person to talk to. So I really love this episode and I think you will too. And uh, this 37th episode was sponsored by Soul Experience, Soul Experiences, which is a South Florida-based events company um, put on by my friend Lynn. And her goal is to basically bring as many South Florida experiences to people as possible at a discounted, in a discounted way. Because uh, there's a lot of fun things to do down here, but sometimes it gets a little pricey. So she figures out a way, whether it's pub crawls or you know day trips to Key West or um, some group sushi dinner, whatever it is, she figures out figures out a way to uh, give us all a discount and make us all have fun. And so go look up Soul Experiences, S O L Experiences. <laughs> look her up on Facebook and Twitter, on Instagram, and keep in touch with the latest and greatest that comes down that pipeline. But for now, sit back and relax and enjoy this, the 37th episode of Curve the Cube, put on by Flintstone Media with today's guest. Carlos Ademann. Enjoy. Curve the Cube will now initiate. Oh. 
All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming out and my pleasure meeting with me and everything. I think uh, you're a really creative and talented person, and I wanted more people Thank to know you. about you. Oh, great, thanks. So, am I pronouncing your right your name right when I say Aleman? That's pretty close. How do you, how would you say it? Well, I can be funny and say it's Aleman. Aleman, uh, like in your um. On your video, oh, I saw no, you. Oh no, don't tell me you saw that. I saw all of that. What is up with, what is it, um, the, it, the name of, there's like a character that you were, to Totoro. Yeah, what is yeah, it? What, what is that? Oh, that's an animated movie. <laughs> Japanese, uh, Hayao Miyazaki movie. Yeah. Very cute movie, you should see it. Yeah, okay. Every I'll kid should see it. I'll look out for it. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, um, where, and you're, in that video that I mentioned, um, you refer to yourself briefly as Brother Alman. <laughs> You're like, I'll explain that later. Yeah, right. Could today be the day? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, uh, was going to take that, that, that video down immediately. Oh, so were I, you really? Yeah, so I, I don't want anyone to see this. I need, I need to pull it immediately. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, uh, since, since you asked, um, my, my wife happened to be part of a very religious family uh -huh. and they all called each other brother so and so and brother so and so yeah, and so yeah, so yeah, so I yeah. called myself brother Carlos. Gotcha. That's all it is. Gotcha. Very interesting. <laughs> so um, how would you describe, so I was looking at your artwork and everything and I know you have your exhibit coming up at the end of the month. How would you describe the feel and the theme of your of your artwork? It's uh, this exhibit is uh, called Dark Chocolate Japan. Sorry, it just got really loud yeah, in here. I just it? noticed. Um, hmm. Pause and uh, take it to a quieter spot. Yeah, maybe. The only spot I saw other than here for sitting was um, kind of in the back, and I don't know if. if yeah, if you want to you want to try that? Yeah. Yeah, it literally was super quiet in here this whole time I've been here. <laughs> Sorry about that. No I usually I was, it, that kind of caught me off guard. I don't know if anyone's gonna hear you. <laughs> Just kind of the point. Yeah. Um, yeah. How would you describe the theme and feel of, of your artwork? Uh, this exhibit is called Dark Chocolate Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an exhibit a few years ago that was Chinese uh, mm -hmm. themed because I had just returned from China. Or I hadn't just returned. I'd been working on paintings for quite a while. Yeah. Inspired from that trip. So this is inspired from uh, my 2013. Japanese, uh, actually, it was the city of Kyoto. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. You and went? Yeah. Oh. It was amazing. We went during uh, Cherry Blossom Week. Nice. How long were you there for? About a week. About a but, week. But yeah. we, I, we didn't intentionally do it yeah. that way. It just turned out. Uh, and, the, you know, the blossoms bloom and fall in a single week. Oh. And that was the exact week we happened to arrive. And it's the, and this is where we got the cherry trees that are in. Um, the cherry blossom trees that are up in DC, right? I think they're similar. I think so. They probably yeah. bloom around in the same Japanese, time. In Japanese, they're called sakura trees. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's the same exact thing. I, I don't I'll know. I'll have to read up on it and see if there's a difference. Yeah, I noticed that you have an affection for Japan. Uh, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot to consider. It's like a whole different world. Yeah. They say uh, to understand a country, you have to live there three years. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, obviously, I didn't. <laughs> Right, 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 right. In Japan, <laughs> but uh, what what does interest interest me a lot is the peop local people that are obsessed with Japan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The uh, the anime fanatics, mm -hmm. they call otaku. Otaku. Yeah, and I, I might be hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. Well, I wouldn't but, know. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, yeah. you are. <laughs> but they they have cosplay competitions and yeah. they dress up as their favorite anime yeah. characters, and I'm I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. And I don't watch that much anime. Yeah. But uh, to see them and you know it's just it's very inspiring. I saw you at the one painting that you did of the. It's almost like looked like a film strip of. Uh, Cosplayers ready to fight the haiku, or haiku is that what they're called? The the um the monster that was oh, coming yeah, out of the yeah, ocean, yeah, yeah. right? right. Uh, they they are ready to fight. Yeah. I was like, that's so that's so interesting. Cos that is so cosplay defenders. Yeah, cosplay and, defenders. And there, there's the the middle panel was this extremely scary monster. Yeah. And then the uh, the cosplayers were tasked with guarding the coastline. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was that inspired for the movie Pacific Rim at all? A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that movie. Oh, it was awesome. so good. It's funny cuz I I have a big affection for like kind of bad sci-fi. It's kind of my favorite yeah. and I went to the theater thinking 
it was going to satisfy that right. interest of mine. Right. I expected the worst, right. which was exciting for me. Right. But I was really impressed with how good a movie it was. Right. I yeah. really loved it. B movies can be very good. Right? If you have the right attitude. Because when I grew up, yeah. we we didn't have the Cartoon Network. We didn't have all the right, stuff. Right, right, right. What we had was Saturday morning creature feature. Mm -hmm. So you had Godzilla Zilla, yeah. versus Gamera yeah. versus Rodan. Yeah. And that was it. That was the coolest thing. It so was when, so cool, though. So when I went to see Pacific Rim, I uh, I was like, okay, I just want this to be totally B. Yeah. If it's ridiculous, good. I'm exactly. Just enjoy the heck out of this. Exactly. And boy, I, I really did enjoy it. It really did. It was a really, really good movie. I was pleasantly surprised. Right, right. Everything was awesome. So, so yeah. So, so this has inspired you to such a level. I mean, how many paintings and pieces of art do you think came out of this? It's hard to say. Yeah. I I, I didn't. I had too many paintings to fit them all into the exhibit. Yeah. I, 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 in fact, I have like a hundred paintings at home. Yeah. And so wow. I was. I, I I went into the gallery and I was measuring carefully. And I think I think I can squeeze twenty one in here. Yeah. Plus my sculptures. Yeah. So uh, on the installation date, I'm going to like try to cram as my, much as you can. Yeah. The thing is, it's not going to look good. Paintings being that close together, uh -huh. but hey, it's a little non-traditional because usually, I mean, I don't go to many, haven't been to too many art exhibits, but the ones I've been to, it's like they're super spread out. There's a lot of white space behind mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. but you're gonna cram it all in yeah, there. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, if, well, if you have a really uh, sophisticated type of exhibit, you yeah. have like the paintings like 20 feet apart. Right, right. You know, and it's like you know, huge canvas, one color, maybe a slant yeah. through it, or know, a dot. Yeah, or a dot, right? <laughs> And then, and then they'll space it, and and, right. and the artist will will spend time thinking about you know exactly how many yeah. inches he wants to hang. He's, and and the, the 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 thing you worry about is you don't want this to look like a student art exhibit. Uh -huh. you, know? yeah. you want it to, but you got to get those paintings in there. Is that what's yeah. what what is what are you hoping to convey, or what message is, has come out of this for you? Uh, I came up with the term dark chocolate. Yeah, I love I love the concept. Please describe it. I, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Dark chocolate is... I literally wrote, like, copied the whole thing. So oh, I was you like, did? That Good. is awesome. Okay, so you can read it back to me. <laughs> Do I to read it to you? I will. All right, okay. Uh, this is... Dark chocolate, and I quote, Dark chocolate to me, meaning Carlos, represents the good stuff, the nutritious, antioxidant-rich form of the deliciousness derived from the seed of a cocoa tree, the best of all chocolates. A dark chocolate Japan, for instance, is, a, is the Japan Westerners have fallen in love with, from Godzilla movies, hey, to anime and technology. Although art and media can be seen as frivolous, when one culture falls in love with another, it is a testament that dark chocolate exists, and we can love everything that is strange, different, and exotic. The cartoons you grew up with, the ancient stories of samurai and the geisha, kokoshi, kokeshi, how does that? Kokeshi. kokeshi dolls, and kimonos we have admired from afar. But no matter where we are, even if we see the less than ideal, the sugary, cheap chocolate defiling our existence, dark chocolate also exists. It does, it does. Loved uh, that. Uh, thank you. Loved it. Love it. Please tell me more. Please tell uh, me more that way that comes from. The uh, a couple of decades ago, there was a movement called um, Super Flat, mm -hmm. and Takashi Murakami was the artist. Who, I think he introduced the term. Mm -hmm. And here in Florida, we had our SoFlo Super Flat, South Florida Super yeah. Flat. And the whole idea was, you you were kind of hinting at this idea that. There's all this commercial su superficiality. Yeah. Uh, he called it the, the the superficial consumer culture in Japan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and you know it's true that there is that aspect that you know social criticism is a valid thing. You, you an artist should be able to say this this is a problem. This is a problem. And yet, and there are also people like me that want to go and say, yeah, but they got, this is awesome and this is awesome. <laughs> and and, and that, you know, it, that's how I feel when I see something that's different from me. Yeah. If, if the, uh, my idea of a nightmarish universe is where everyone is like me. Mm -hmm. So if I find that there's diversity, people look different than me, yeah. talk different than me, think different, than me, I think that is fascinating. Yeah, and and so dark chocolate is going deep in and finding what we all have in common, mm -hmm. and 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 saying, wow, you know, there's something really profound, right, beautiful that that about us all, and you can even say we're almost sharing this life together. We're one life. Yeah, I think that's great. And I remember there was um, 
one of your paintings in particular, I want to make sure I get the name right, because this one I was like, oh, it's going to trip me up a little bit. Um, it was of the lady, ooh, ooh. it was American Geisha. And Which it was, one? it was, one the, it was, two? oh, I don't, I didn't know. I just, I just said American Geisha. It was the one of, it was the Geisha, but she had darker skin. Uh -huh. That's number one. Okay. I thought, I was like, that's so awesome. Like what a beautiful image I've never seen before. And I thought that was really great. I thought it would be very interesting. Yeah. That juxtaposition. Yeah. 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 I think it's, I, th I love that you are exploring um, the mixes of cultures and what it is that makes us beautifully different mm -hmm. and in that commonality we're all the mm -hmm. same. I, I love that. So I think, I think this is really exciting and yeah, good for you. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to know, because you mentioned on your site that you, in prepping for your exhibit, you published your, your book independently. Right. So I was wondering if you would be so kind mm -hmm. as to give some advice to other artists out there, other people out there who might be trying to figure out how to do that. How do I publish something independently and, and get that project done on my own? Uh, it's surprisingly simple. Yeah? Uh, I've, I've written novels before, mm -hmm. and I've had a, a, a publisher mm -hmm. publish my stuff. And, and the thing is, you know, when you self-publish, there's a stigma. It's like, ah, oh, it's just self-published. <laughs> right, You're not right. really published. Right, right, right. But the, with the exhibit coming up, I was like, I, I want to get this thing out quick, mm -hmm. so that, you know people can see it, read a little bit about you know the the whole idea of dark chocolate and all yeah. that. So it, it, it was essentially creating a Microsoft Word document, mm -hmm. inserting text and pictures, mm -hmm. uploading it to the Amazon site CreateSpace, and then oh. uh, you you try to make a cover that fits the you kind of uh, calculate the number yeah. of pages and how big you need to make the cover to go around it and then they send it back to you either they rejected it or it met, met the criteria mm -hmm. and then once it's ready you, you can order a proof and then you, if you say I like the proof then that's it you can really it. Yeah. That's, and can you publish like a wide variety like a, either a, just a small handful of copies or you can yeah, print that's, like that's a bunch idea. of it's them? all print on demand awesome. so they can just print one or a gazillion that's brilliant isn't it? Amazon, you said, huh? Yeah. Amazon's doing some really incredible things. Yeah. Remember back when it was just like an online store that sold a few, just a right. few things in there? Right. Yeah, <laughs> they're the world's biggest store now. Yeah, and they're like doing yeah. all that online streaming yeah. and all kinds of stuff. It depends who you are. Some people are very angry at Amazon. Mm, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, what's the anger for? Well, I haven't heard that yet. The, some people say that uh, they're hurting the publishing industry. Oh. You know, if people can publish their own material. And, uh, and also, there's a lot of really poorly written books that are now being, being published. published. <laughs> it's not being there's edited. There's no more uh, value filter. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, just, it's unedited, it's full of typos. It's, it's, it's no one bothered to tell the person, oh, uh, dude, you can't write. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like American Idol when you have the train wreck uh, yeah, editions in the first yes, week. It's like, yes. oh, that poor person, why didn't someone tell right, them that... that Amazon just, lets them in anyways. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, it's public humiliation. These poor people are singing, and then they, on national television, millions of people I watch, know. and they go home crying when the I judges know. say, I'm sorry, but you're tone deaf, you know? And the crazy thing is that there actually are, like, stages of auditioning earlier in the day. Like, you have to make it through a couple yeah. other people, so you kind of wonder, did they, they must have purposely put some really, really bad people yeah. on just for the... Uh, you gotta wonder. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You gotta wonder. <laughs> so crazy. So, yeah, you, um... You, I, I read an excerpt from that you had on your of your from your book. Happy that it's not true. Mm -hmm. You had a, an excerpt on there. Um, but first of all, I think it's amazing that you're both an artist and a writer. I mean, kudos to you. It's Thank like you. it's like meeting someone who can like play multiple instruments or something. I'm fascinated. So that's well, amazing. Once you achieve crazy level. <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's all the same. It's all the same stuff. <laughs> right. what, what is the different muscle in your brain that you use for each type of project versus, like, art versus writing? Uh, I'm a very slow thinker. Mm -hmm. I do terrible in school. I always did terrible oh, in school. Oh, really? You know, the, the teachers just looked at me and shook their heads. And I was, like, in la-la land, you uh -huh. know, daydreaming all day. Yeah. And, and that, I guess that, that's good for something, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Everyone's talent comes from somewhere in right. different form. You never right. know. You never know. You never know. Yeah, so um, in, the, in your excerpt, you said a couple of things that I wonder if they're very true about yourself. 
I couldn't help but wonder. So the couple of things you said, um, a couple of excerpts from the book, it says, mm, Yes, for some, madness waits in the cover of night to tear the soul to pieces, but you shouldn't be so quick to judge. One day madness might come looking for you, Diego smiled. And the other thing is that is, it says, and this kind of goes to what you were saying before about when you're defining dark chocolate, I still believe we're all basically the same. We're all very different, of course, but we're all the same. What a paradox. Mm -hmm. Is It almost made me wonder if there is a, a sameness in your theme between your writing and your artwork. Where did, where did that, did that book come, where did that come from inside that book? The, the idea that madness might be lurking somewhere, uh -huh. where did it come and get you? Um, I, I'm looking at it as just a person that dislikes very much anyone judging another person. That's good. When someone says, that person is crazy, mm -hmm. or what's wrong with that person, I tend to think, wait, you know, they're essentially the same, they're a different version of us. Yes. You know? They, they may Let have someone peel back your layers for a moment, right? right? <laughs> Not only that. <laughs> Not only that. There's there's a certain degree. I mean, if someone sustains even microscopic brain damage to the frontal lobe, mm -hmm. that could render them incapable of loving people. Mm -hmm. There goes. You, you might even develop a pathologic, pathological lack of compassion. Mm -hmm. it, it could be just any environment, mm -hmm. genetics, your upbringing. Mm -hmm. So. When, when you see someone and you just don't understand them and you wonder, how could that person be like that? When yeah. you judge them, instead you, be, you, should, you should be saying, Whoa, man, I'm glad I'm not like that. Right. That could have been me. Or maybe what has happened to them right. and find that compassion right. within yourself. That's even better. Yeah. yeah. It's very true. I have to do that all the time. <laughs> People, I have to remind myself all the time. Take a deep breath. You don't know where they're coming from. Think about it for right, a second. Right, right. <laughs> and so, yeah, so you've written, I'm, I was trying to figure it out. Is it four? Is it three published novels so far? Or is it four, right? Because you have As Happy as Ling. I have three in the trilogy. Mm -hmm, three mm -hmm. trilogy. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> the, the, the first two were published okay. by I Know Publishing. Mm -hmm. And the third one, I think, is coming out this year. Okay. Uh, and that's Diego in Two Places? Diego in yeah. Two Places. Yeah. And that's more about the theme where these two Diegos are essentially the same person. Oh, uh, gotcha. It, it goes a little deeper into... The, 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 if you want to give it a, a, a name, you can call it non-duality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But... Uh, the, the, there's the idea that there's one life, mm -hmm. and uh, our our brains might be a little different. Yeah. But we're the same. When you when you did you know you were gonna write a trilogy when you started, no, or I did didn't. it just kind of no. yeah? How did it develop? How did that I got such about? a such good feedback from mm -hmm. the first book, mm -hmm. and uh, and then the, the was that Nuno or was your first book as happy as Ling? As happy as Ling. So mm -hmm. then I wrote a prequel, okay, which is Nuno. Gotcha. gotcha. And uh, and and that. It was funny. Let me let me tell you how it all began. Yeah, please. I was writing because I'm in the technology industry, mm -hmm. and one day for some reason, I'm, you know, always people keep asking me how to design websites, how to code in HTML, and all that. I'm yeah. just gonna write a little how-to thing once, and and I didn't real I didn't know I could write. Huh. And see, you tell you never know where it comes yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and people are like, "This is great. This. Is, what do you mean this is great?" I did this. This can't be great. <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah. This? Me? <laughs> well, I, you know, I never took any creative writing yeah. classes. Obviously, this is not creative writing, but I just didn't think anyone uh, would have the attention span to sit there and read something as boring as a how-to manual. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, if, if, if I can write that, what if? Yeah, because it could have just been that you haven't had a knack for explaining something otherwise very technical and difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't seen what you wrote, but right. I'm, you know that you never know what it is about what you've written that is drawing people in over and over mm -hmm. again. But yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So I, I had a similar experience with the first novel. Yeah, and I can't I can't believe people read it, <laughs> and then I can't believe people liked it. And I was like, wow, maybe maybe I'm you know a good writer. I don't know. Yeah. And so I wrote the second novel. My uh, my publishers flipped out, and then I started writing the third one, and, uh, and, and I've written a couple more, mm -hmm. which I'm just going to leave in the closet for a little while, mm -hmm. you know, simmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, were, you, were, um, you were explaining that you like, you want to, you like to forget it a little bit, and yeah. then come back to it with Well, these eyes. are going to forget a lot. A lot. Yeah. And I'm going to look at it for a few years from now, and then... Really? A few gonna, years? Yeah. And when I read it, it's going to be, I'm going to have such fresh eyes, it's going to be like another person 
you know, reading. Because, you know, we, we all change right, and we're constantly right, right. evolving, so. Do you think, um, because, I, you know, just like you're saying, we're all changing, we're all constantly evolving. And so if you start a project at one in one time and space in your life and then you put it aside and a couple years later you come back to it, um, do you think there's more benefit in the future self of yours seeing it versus versus maybe you're not in the same exact place that you were when you started writing it and maybe finishing in, in that same place you used to be. Does that make that's, sense? Well, that's a very, very like, good question. I'm like actually. making up the questions. I'm like, I think I have a question here. This is a question. When when I wrote As Happy As Ling, yeah. I could see now I was a different person. Yeah. And what, what writing is, uh, above all, is it's therapeutic. It's like anyone will tell you if, if uh, journaling, writing, mm -hmm. keeping a journal is a great, great thing. Absolutely. And you get out so much. Absolutely. And uh, what I did was I wrote about a lot of things and I kind of wrote them in a way that no one knew, would know that it's about me. Oh. So it's kind of like a journal made public, but it's all in disguise. Masked in a story. So I have, I have all these different characters. Yeah. They all represent different parts of me. Yeah. Except the crazy people, of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not, I'm not Luciano. I never heard anyone. <laughs> I got to check this character out. Yeah, oh, he's bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it, but yeah, anyways, I could go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, is, um, is the writing process... Is, is the writing process more therapeutic than the art, than the process of doing art, or is it, it different? It's different. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that um, with writing, you really get out some deep stuff inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. With, with art, it's almost like a love affair, you know? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I love art. Oh, I'm doing art. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, you know, it, I think other people get more out of it, too, because mm -hmm. they look at your painting, paintings and they'll be like, oh, wow, that really touched me. Mm -hmm. well. I was just having a really good time painting mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it, in, me, in my mind, it's so different because you can have an art piece that says an entire story in and of itself. Mm -hmm. A whole, it gives you a whole story, a whole feeling, mm -hmm. a new world in and of itself. And when you're getting that from a novel, it's a much longer process because it's, you know, you read it and there's a journey that you go on that's a very different, very different yeah, process. So do you... Is it a different approach then when you say, I want to express X, Y, Z? Yeah, it's like the yeah. difference between taking a photograph and shooting yeah. a movie. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right? That's true, absolutely. And you can say so much. I, it, the, I think that with art, you have to put a lot of paintings together mm -hmm. and then make a statement. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this, this exhibit or these series of paintings or uh, this time in my life when I painted the, the blue paintings or whatever, mm -hmm. this tells this story. Mm -hmm. That's the closest closest you would come to a novel, right. which is this epic. Right, that, right, right. Yeah, you know, just stretches out. Yeah. So your your Cuban background, your Cuban, mm -hmm. right? Your Cuban background has helped you. Has is that been um, the basis of, the, of of some of your of the novels? And yeah, so you yeah, say you drew from yourself. And that's your the palette I use. Yeah, the, the, palette. The, the palette of colors that I was blessed to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and the thing is the. Cubans are such lively people, mm -hmm. very colorful, mm -hmm. and they. My love parents are from Haiti. My family's from Haiti, so I so, totally you know, you get, it. I get, it. I, right, I get it. I get it. Right, I get it. I was born in New York City, uh -huh. and uh, and there wasn't as much family experiences as I would have liked, uh, but just being around like my grandparents and a few neighbors, yeah, and I, it was just hysterical. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so funny the the exaggerations. You know, and, and how they they perceive things. Uh -huh. it, it, you can you can write a million stories. Absolutely, you know. absolutely. So you've said you, you said that because obviously dark chocolate um, is very Japanese themed. There's a lot of that in there. But then you've also done, you, as you were saying, some paintings that are more uh, Chinese themed right, and right. influenced. Have you done art that's been Cuban influenced? Have you done that yet? No, I haven't. Do you think the, you will? I think, I think it's like my wife. My wife is Chinese. Mm -hmm. So whatever she cooks, I say, oh, it's Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, it's, it's not I like that. Yeah, so, so, so I like that. I, whatever I do is going to be Cuban American. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. The, the, my, um, if I delve into the, more into specifically Cuban American, then you have my novels. Yeah. My art right now, it, it's been... 
experiences of my search for meaning, mm -hmm. uh, the things I learned from studying Asian culture and mm -hmm. their way of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, first in China mm -hmm. in 2010, I, I, I saw all this art and it was kind of, it was, they purposely leave out a lot of color in order to get to the essence of really? things, the life force. And I, and I kind of walked away with that, with thinking, you know what, if, if, I, if I do more monochromatic work, I, I think I can begin to understand what they're up to. Mm -hmm. And then with the Japanese, a, a whole new world of ideas. Mm -hmm. It's very fascinating. Do you think you're going to continue to explore and travel to different places to get that new inspiration? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious that, yeah? you know, what my next uh, Where do you think you might end be? up? Where do you think you might go? If you, I don't, I, yeah. you know, my, I, I'm thinking about going to Spain. Okay. And who knows what that will lead to. Go to the Prado Museum. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. If you go to Spain uh -huh. and you don't go to the Prado Museum, I'm going to find you uh -huh. <laughs> and just yell at you. Okay. Because you've, it's probably, um, I've, I've been very fortunate to have been to Europe a couple of times. And, and when, I, when I was in Madrid, I was studying abroad, and we went to the Prado Museum. And I, it changed my life. Like... The, the, the artistry and, and the history, mm -hmm. it's like, it, it's one of those things, and I'm sure when you went to Japan and China, you experienced it right. in a similar way, because there's just so much right. history right, there, right, right. thousands of years. And, you know, when you go to Western Europe, it's, you know, younger history than Asia, but it's still just mm -hmm. full of, of history. Mean. I mean, you walk down the street, and there's a building that's older than the United oh, States yeah. of America. It's like, oh. it like blows your mind. Yeah, that's an incredible thing about Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, definitely, definitely go to the park. Please, <laughs> please, please, please. It's in Madrid. Don't, uh, you cannot miss it. Like, yeah. such gorgeous if, stuff. If you're a sensitive person, how can you not be astonished and overwhelmed mm -hmm. when you experience something like that? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then you went went home and you did a bunch of paintings. And I painted and some amazing <laughs> stuff. There you go. In my head. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have never been gifted in that way. I, I was a, okay, um like black and white like pencil sketcher mm -hmm. I'm okay right. other than that no 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 if you can if you know <laughs> let me tell you a secret if you can draw you can paint oh people have told me that I'm like I just yeah. don't know if it's true <laughs> for it, me I don't yeah, know yeah but it's a leap it's a huge leap yeah. it's a huge leap maybe I just need the right guidance yeah. I don't you know have to have the I'm right like, cereal oh. in the morning and yeah yeah I just something about like because I know you know the, the way the paint mixes and all of that stuff and there's like a texture there and all of that I'm like I don't I don't know I can't me. I get a pencil on paper. I've been doing practice. that since I was like three, so I get it. Practice, practice. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. So tell me, um, which, which actually are you more passionate about, do you think? Do you, is it writing or art, or is it, you, or can you not even? Do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they both move you. Yeah. Does, I mean, art is my first love. Yeah. Uh, writing came to me late in life. But when I'm writing, I just think it's the greatest thing in the world. Does do they influence each other? Your writing and your painting? Yeah, in my in my novels, uh, and Diego is an art teacher. Oh. And, uh, oh, right. From I read that excerpt. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. There you go. Interesting. I wanted to. I was curious because, um, you know, like I said, I think it's fascinating that you're both an artist and a writer, and to me, those are two pieces of imagination that are just huge to have in one person. I couldn't help myself but wonder. I'm like, hmm. I wonder what he daydreams about. What do you daydream about? Uh, that's a. That means it could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. Just the mind just goes. And and the thing is, that's not good for you. No. No. You, 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 you used to daydream when you were a kid. Look where I got you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if it, it, it can lead to being emotionally unbalanced if you. If, if your brain is going 100 miles an hour too all much. the time, yeah, yeah you, you, have, you have to meditate, you need to ignore the mind sometimes a little bit, step mm -hmm. away from the, you know, the mind and the emotions. Yeah, yeah I know. But, go, ahead. go ahead. No, it's just, a, but that, that's essentially it. You have to, the, the, if you find a balance, then, you know, daydream all you want. <laughs> how, about, how about night dreams? Are your night dreams, like, oh, my, super my, creative? Yeah, or? my night dreams are, are, are bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, I, like, I, I'll forget them like after a day or so. Yeah. But uh, the day I have them, I'll be thinking, oh wow. <laughs> and then you, you're, you're one weird dude. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever woken up and said I got a 
put that on paper somehow. Or on no, what does like it? That. What I hate is waking up in the middle of the night because the dream was so intense. Yeah. Because then I can't get back to sleep. Uh, and I'm exhausted the next day. Yeah, that's the yeah. worst. <laughs> but I should write them down. <laughs> there was one where uh, I did include in uh, in my first novel. Uh huh. And it was a, it was really a terrifying dream. Really. Yeah. And 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 so you know what? I'm going to use this as a way of describing this really bad, really awful scene I'm about to write. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, gosh, so fascinating. And um, <clears throat> so tell us, tell everybody, give us uh, the details about your exhibit that's coming up, because I want everyone to have all that information. Dark Chocolate Japan. Yeah. Uh, August 28th. Uh huh. Um, at the Sunrise Gallery in the City of Sunrise. Mm -hmm. We're in Florida. And uh, it starts at 6.30. If you get there early, mm -hmm. you may get some kind of surprise type thing. Hey now, but, I'm interested to know, but I will but not But drive ask. carefully. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't speed up to get there. Oh my gosh. And so that's, it starts at 6.30? 6.30. August 28th. At the Sunrise Gallery. Yeah. C and, okay. City of Sunrise Civic Center. Oh, City of Sunrise Civic Center. If okay. you want to Google it. Okay. And I also saw that you're going. You're scheduled to appear on an episode of the Art Loft. Yes, I am. What's Art Loft? Art Loft is WPBT Channel Two. Uh huh. And they uh, they have a very good program actually, highlighting local artists. Mm -hmm. And. The, the people behind it are actually, some of them are art historians. These people really know uh, their craft or their subject matter. Yeah. And they, they do some really good interviews with uh, local artists. I saw one guy who was talking about his portraits, and he did, he did some beautiful, beautiful uh, portraiture. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they even do like filmmakers, all kinds of very creative people. How do you how do you network and put your art out, out there, and how, do you, how have you been able to do that for yourself? Uh, Networking isn't that hard if, if you're talking about networking with other artists. And that, with, yeah, with the industry, with the scene, with, with there, all of that, yeah. There are millions yeah. of artists. Yeah. It, the more you look, the more you're astounded at how many other <laughs> artists there are. Mm -hmm. So you can find a lot, a lot of artists uh, to network with. Um, it's, as far as you know, hitting the big time. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, you know, getting an exhibit <laughs> and all that. <laughs> uh, well, that's what's great about the public art, and art in public places, mm -hmm. and things like that. You know, if, if you're approaching a commercial gallery, mm -hmm. these people have to make a living. Mm -hmm. So uh, they need n name recognition. They understand the market value of, of certain works of art, and and so they can't really showcase your work unless you're famous mm -hmm. essentially and, and they're just trying to stay you know keep stay alive right right keep and the lights on so what the rest of us can do is we can you know try and find like uh, public outlets i had a a boca raton uh exhibit at their city hall a few years back oh wow and then i had the sunrise uh exhibit uh also in 2012 mm -hmm. i believe it was and now As this with the one, same same place as yeah. this one that's coming up? Right, okay. right. Yeah. That's awesome. And <clears throat> I, so you mentioned earlier that you also are a sculptor. I know you do the, are they, oh God, I want to get it right. I want to get it right. Kokeshi yeah. dolls? Okay. Yeah. I, I know you, you make those, right? I, I don't know if I would call it sculpting. Okay. Because uh, I, I, I take a lot of shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and if you consider like, the Japanese kokeshi makers, these people are master woodworkers. Mm. What they do takes months, and what I did, essentially, when I first started doing the Kokeshi dolls, I took little wooden pieces and put them together and painted them, <laughs> and they look nice. Yeah. They're not Japan done anything done by a master a Japanese craftsman. Yeah. Now what I've been doing lately, which I, is a little different, is doing oh. duct tape Kokeshi dolls. <laughs> duct tape Kokeshi dolls. Yeah. And if. If you're familiar with the company Duck D U C K, they do duct tape. All kinds of all cool kinds of cool patterns, patterns right? Oh, I've seen some like they have like Hello Kitty, and exactly. Ninja Turtles, yeah, yeah, like yeah. everything, Every, Angry Birds. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, lots of stuff. So I did a Kokeshi doll and just wrapped the whole thing up in different types of. You patterns. know what? Now that you mention it, because when I was looking at one of them, and I, I didn't think of, of saving the picture um, for this, but when I when I was looking at one of them. 
a couple of the patterns was like, I, I've seen that somewhere. I've seen that somewhere before. It was bothering me. And now that you mention it, that's where I've seen it. I'm now tape. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery solved. Yeah, I wonder what the reaction is going to be when people go to the exhibit and go, hey, wait a second. Wait this a is second. Duct tape. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, you know, they make, people make duct tape dresses now. Mm -hmm. People do all kinds of funky mm -hmm. stuff with duct tape. So this is just another thing. Well, if you look at a lot of the very famous artists like uh, Jeff Koons mm -hmm. and Damien Hirst and Takashi Murakami, they have workshops where they have many assistants doing all the detail work. Gotcha. And a lot of times they never even touch the artwork. They just they direct right. it. So I'm thinking, hey, you know, if they do that, <laughs> maybe I can just use what this company has done with their duct tape. There you go. And they, I can see them, they can be my assistants. Right, 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 exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly, just listen to the credits. Yeah, right. <laughs> assistants by duct tape. Right, right. <laughs> the, great, the great designers of duct tape. Uh, and you have um, t-shirts currently available for sale? Yes. On Zazzle? Right, right, right. So um, you just go to Zazzle and put in your name and some cool Yeah, if you go to my website, yeah. there's a shop link, it'll take you to the Zazzle site and you can actually customize your shirt. Nice. Pick out, you know, the type, tank top, tee, women's tees, funky tee, right. you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever, color, size. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so tell people what your website is and how to find you on social media. And Carlos Aleman, C-A-R-L-O-S-A-L-E-M-A-N.com. And from there, I think all my social links are there. Are so right you, there. Yeah, yeah. So you can just click away. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you've been a fantastic interview. Your everything that oh. you had to say was just fascinating. Thank you. I think um, I love your your message of of the dark chocolate. I think that I seriously I read it. I was like, because um, when I saw the title, <clears throat> you know, it immediately made me think of. The, na the usual comparison of like black women or you know black skin or whatever yeah. and so I was like what I wonder what this is and as, I'm, as I, I saw some of the pictures of the art before I saw the explanation I was like okay so I don't get it but then I was like right. I, there, I want to get it and I read the explanation I'm like I get it <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing I'm so glad I you like it I love it I love it I love what you're doing so thank you so much for my pleasure being a, um, an inspiration a talent of of for us in South Florida and thanks for saying such nice things about me ah, very kind. well you know that hundred dollars you said earlier <laughs> <laughs> grease the wheels a little bit yeah, you grease the wheels <laughs> thank you so much would you mind um, signing my guest book absolutely yeah okay and then this fly that's flying around is absolutely driving me bananas but and then um, oh, do you want to also sign off the podcast? It's super easy. All you have to do is say, oof, it's fly. All you have to do is say, uh, you know, hey, this has been Carlos Alamon, or however you want to say it. Right. And uh, it's your name. And then, <laughs> and say, you know, this has been Curve the Cube. Okay, I, can, I can't uh, talk and chew gum. Oh, so, no worries. So I, will, I get it. I, I get will it. sign my name first. I get it. I get it. But it's not ready. Oh, it's not? Uh, I love it when a reliable pen is unreliable. There you go. Oh, we're liable. <laughs> there you go. Liable. Thank you so Actually, much. Actually, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to do, do all of my little scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you um, come up with that little? Yes. I loved it. It's ridiculous. That's why I like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was like, you know, I love the way the Chinese do their characters. Yeah. I'm going to make a fake Chinese There Japanese you go. I love it. I love it. And put my name into it. Yeah, Chinese letters, Japanese, all, all those. It, fascinates me fascinates me it makes because our alphabet is so simple mm -hmm. and you know when you hear about how there's a history behind those letters and the strokes mean something and it's like oh my gosh like that's just amazing so i'm gonna appreciate I love calligraphy. that yeah, yeah. this is incredible stuff well mm -hmm. thank you so much it's been great 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 meeting you and interviewing great you and talking yeah. to you thank you so much yay oh and do you want to do the sign off yeah, yes yeah. this is carlos aleman <laughs> with curb the cube Woo! High five. Perfect. All right, Thank perfect. you. My pleasure. Yay. It's been an honor. Ah, you're the best. You have successfully curved the cube.